The six pillars of player engagement and how Halo Infinite will not be pay to win, but will have some paid items within it, and how it's going to function similar to the MCC. We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gaming news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. It really helps out the video and channel. If you're new to the channel and also want to stay up to date with all the news going on, make sure you tap subscribe guys. Keep yourself updated with everything going on with Halo. As we all know, Halo Infinite development update came out recently and it was such a long update. I had to break it up in multiple videos because there's a lot of information here that if you just kind of breathe through it, you don't really pick up on it, but if you kind of dive into it deep and think about it, you actually come up with some really detailed stuff. And in this section, they talk about the six pillars of player engagement and how Halo Infinite is going to play out once it finally releases in holiday 2021. So what we're going to do is read each pillar and then what we're going to do is analyze it and compare it to previous games and what 343 has done in the past to see if what they're saying actually holds up. But let's get right into the video here. Pillar number one is healthy player engagement is paramount. We want everyone to play this game in a healthy manner that they enjoy. We're not trying to build a grind machine that burns everyone out in an attempt to get more game time from them. Halo Infinite needs to be a place where all look forward to spending time. This is very important to know because a lot of games out there have been starting to utilize game time and starting to value the player's time more than anything else, really. Publishers and game developers are starting to realize that the more people are staying within your ecosystem of playing your game, the more likely they're going to engage with the content, the more likely they'll pay more extra money to, you know, buy for microtransactions and things like that. So they want to make sure that they put some kind of form of a grind in there to kind of keep you activated in playing the game. Some games have gone too far with this, and some games have done it properly as well. Back in its initial release, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was heavily criticized for the amount of grind that was needed through these loot boxes that you need to unlock everything within the game. It was rather absurd, and to the point where it was almost unfathomable the amount that someone would have to play. You'd have to dedicate your entire life to playing the game. That's really unhealthy play style and engagement from the player base. Because what is a healthy balance though? Because you're going to have those people who just play on the weekends, maybe two hours a week, something like that at the most. And you also have your content streamers who play the game full time as a job. How do you balance out those players who play like two hours a week and the players who play 40 plus hours a week and still have engaging content on either side? The next pillar brings that up actually. Maintain a player first focus. Think of all the games we've all played that have random rewards. Ask people to play a way they hate just to for a new shiny or weaponized FOMO, fear of missing out, against the player. There will be limited time events, but we don't want to turn free time into a chore. We're not all about that. Everyone should enjoy their time in Halo Infinite. I think a very important thing they bring up is talking about FOMO, is a, which is an acronym for fear of missing out, which a lot of uh, free to play games utilize, where basically you have this one time item that's only gonna be in this season. And if you don't grind the game all the way through, you're not gonna earn that item ever again. Now they do mention that they don't want to weaponize FOMO, but they don't mention that they're not going to have it whatsoever. Uh, they do say that they're going to have limited time events, which will most likely have rewards tied to those events. But I don't think we're going to see a constant thing of having the cool new thing of the season being tied to like the very end of the grind that you need to put in you know, hundreds of hours into playing for that season. You've had limited time events with the MCC and yeah, there are some items that you can only pick up by doing specific things. I and mean, there's a little bit of FOMO there, but it's not to the point where it's going to be egregious, where it's going to affect your game experience. Here's the part where I was talking about how they're not going to be pay to win in Halo Infinite because a lot of free to play games fall to that and they call it ambiguous value. If someone invests their time or money in the game, they should understand what they're getting and what that will be worth more than the investment. Examples of this in practice include no loot boxes, either through engagement or in any premium route. And we're not selling power or giving an unfair advantage in game via any route. This is something that Star Wars Battlefront 2 tried to do with loot boxes and having in game advantages within those loot box unlocks, and that completely obliterated loot boxes as a whole. So we have no loot boxes in Halo Infinite, which previously they said no paid loot boxes, which is kind of ambiguous. This one's straight up not happening in the game. Very good to hear. And they're not going to be selling in game advantages, which is 
into what was happening with Halo 5, especially with like that Nornfang pack that you had in Warzone. Warzone is kind of pay to win, but kind of not at the same time. You can make an argument for both. The general consensus has been no loot boxes, you know, monetize the customization, and that's what we're going to be seeing with Halo Infinite, which we'll be diving in a little bit later in this video. The next part, we're talking about transparency and working with the community, saying that they're always the listening, learning, and experimenting. The live team is all about growth and iteration. We build and support some fun content, but there will also be times where things don't go as planned or where something we tried just didn't land well. There will also be times when we believe in ideas and want to give them a chance in the wild, and we ask that to be understanding as we try them out. These will be moments of us to learn and grow. It will require a close partnership with our players where we can talk about what happened and what we are trying to do and be transparent in our plans to move ahead as much as we can. This is very good to hear because we do know Halo Infinite does have a 10 year plan and let's be real not everything throughout that 10 year plan is going to be you know sunshine and roses. There are going to be times where we probably see something in the game and we're not going to like about that. We need to bring up our voice and talk about that which we did with the armor coding system. They did mention that they are going to be you know being a little more generous I guess with the initial starting off point with armor codings that you can earn in game. But, uh, I mean, that's kind of a weak little compromise, I think. But it's very important to know that they're going to be open and honest with us. They're going to communicate with us and listen to us, you know, listening to YouTube videos, Reddit posts, Twitter, and just various outlets and Halo Waypoint forums as well, just so they get an understanding of where players are coming from, what the general consensus is. They've been building up this community team for years now, and I think they're going to do a great job moving forward. I mean, they have, ever since Sketch moved in as the community director at 343, the communication has really improved with 343 to the point where I feel like we're almost kind of spoiled as a community for how much the developers interact with the community here. This next section talks about value and content. I'm going to kind of put these last two pillars together, which kind of describes why Halo Infinite is going to work very similar to the MCC. Combined with our engagement pillar, we want to be clear about how to earn rewards. Most of all, we want to bring the best set of cosmetic only rewards to Halo. We want great looking assets and ways to show off that Spartan. We want players to get close with their Spartan and spend time swapping parts and pieces. It has been said before, and it's important to reiterate, no loot boxes, no randomness in rewards. Here's one talking about player expression. We want everyone to build their dream Spartan. We are always looking for more ways to customize in-game personas and give the player options. My team knows that our long-term players have favorites that they love and many have for two decades. We want to make sure that Halo Infinite players will be able to get their old favorites as well as find new favorites at launch and as we expand over the months post-launch, much like MCC, I want to bring everything to Halo Infinite eventually. Again, very important to know that they mentioned cosmetic only when it comes to rewards and also no loot boxes and no randomness in those rewards as well. So it sounds like Halo Infinite's multiplayer is going to be rather, you know, slimy free. It's not going to feel like an EA game. It's going to be feeling like a Halo game. And how they mentioned about how it's going to work very similar to the MCC right here with earning more content within the game throughout the months, which, you know, they've been de dealing out that content within a battle pass which I would assume probably have some kind of monetization tied to it. You can either pay for it outright or maybe pay for, you know, jump starts or maybe you can just pay for items individually or you can just grind it out and you can earn it just like you can in the MCC. So I've, to me, this almost certainly confirms a battle pass being in Halo Infinite, which is also a leaked rumor from Clobro, who's a you know rather notable leaker of within Microsoft. And so this sounds rather similar and also would pretty much confirm that would be happening, which I think was going to happen. I have a feeling that Halo Infinite will be following a very similar style to Modern Warfare or uh, Call of Duty Cold War, where you have a season pass, you can grind through everything there, and you have an additional shop where you can buy some more customization if you would like. And you can earn in-game credits to buy those microtransactions through the battle pass as well by just playing the game a lot. Overall, after reading this, I am actually very excited about the prospect of a free-to-play multiplayer for Halo Infinite. This sounds like a game where you can almost have to play it. You'd be dumb not to play it. I mean, you would be because it's Halo and it's awesome. So we will have to wait and see until we get some actual numbers and experience to understand how much the grind is going to be. What is the 
FOMO or fear of missing out going to be like, and also what are the microtransactions going to be like. We don't know for sure, but what they're saying, it sounds promising. So if you guys want to know whenever we get some more information on this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, check out the videos on the screen if you missed any content from me recently. Got a link to all my news and informational videos right there for you all. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.